What is materiality? Information is material if its omission or misstatement could influence the economic decisions of users taken on the basis of the financial statements. Materiality depends on the size of the item or error judged in the particular circumstances of its omission or misstatement. Thus, materiality provides a threshold or cut-off point rather than being a primary qualitative characteristic which information must have if it is to be useful. So, omission or misstatement are considered to be material if it could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decisions of users. Judgments on materiality are affected depending on the size of the item, nature, or particular circumstances of its omission or misstatement. Materiality also provides thresholds which information must have if it is to be useful. So it is the auditor's responsibility to express an opinion on whether the financial statements are prepared in all material respects in accordance with financial accounting standards. Materiality is the degree of inaccuracy that is still considered acceptable given the purpose of the financial statements. So next is the materiality level. Planning materiality is a concept that is used to design the audit such that the auditor can obtain reasonable assurance that any error of a relevant size or nature will be identified. So planning materiality basically refers to the misstatement amount set by the auditors at the planning stage of the audit. It is a benchmark used to obtain reasonable assurance that an audit does not detect any material misstatement that can significantly impact the usability of the financial statements. So what is material is often difficult to determine. It is a matter of professional judgment. However, four factors are generally considered. The size of the item, the nature of the item, the circumstances, and the cost and benefit of auditing the item. So yung unang factor is the size of the item. The most common application of materiality concerns the size of the item considered. A large dollar amount item omitted from the financial statements is generally material. So, kung malaking amount yung omit sa financial statement, that is generally material. So, size must be considered in relative terms. Example, as the percentage of a relevant base like net income, total assets, sales, and etc. rather than an absolute amount. So, halimbawa, uh, si company A, yung kanyang relevant base is the total asset. So, company A has have a total asset of 5 million and 5% of that is considered material. So, that would be uh, 250,000. So, the view that uh, the size is an essential determinant of materiality means that for financial reporting purposes, materiality can only be judged in relation to items or error which are quantifiable in monetary terms. The second factor is the nature of the item. An auditor cannot quantify the materiality decisions in all cases. Certain items may have significance, even though the amount may not be as quite as large as the auditor would typically consider material. So, as a previous example with Company A that have a uh, a materiality threshold of 250,000 but a political bribe by a client of 100,000 would be considered material kahit na hindi siya, um, it's not as large as the 250,000 because of such sensitive nature and have such an effect on the company's financial statements the users would need to be told. So there are aspects of nature of a misstatement to be considered in making uh, judgments about materiality. So first is the events or transactions giving rise to the misstatement or if it is unusual transaction or events that warrants investigation. Next is the legality, sensitivity, normality, and potential circumstances of the event or transaction. So like bribes, thefts, or sometimes an incentive or pressure to perpetuate fraud. And the next one is the identity uh, of any other, any other parties involved. 
So a client uh, or a personnel within the organization that involves in bribery and fraudulent acts and the accounts and disclosure notes affected. Circumstances of occurrence. The materiality of an error depends upon the circumstances of its occurrence. There are two types of relevant circumstances. The first one is the users of the accounting information's economic decision-making process. So since materiality means the impact on the decisions of the users, the auditor must have knowledge of the likely users of the financial statements and those users' decision process. So uh, halimbawa, uh, if the primary users of the financial statements are the creditors, so si auditor pwede siyang mag-assign ng low materiality level or low materiality threshold to those items uh, on the FS that affects the liquidity such as the current assets and current liabilities. So if yung primary users naman is uh, investors or potential investors, pwedeng mag-assign si auditor ng uh, low materiality threshold sa income. So, the second one is the context of the accounting information in which an item or error occurs. So, a misstatement uh, may be in the context of comparative figures and trends, uh, financial statements of comparative entities and management or shareholders' expectations. The next topic is reliability, precision, and amount of evidence. According to ISA 320, the auditor should consider materiality and its relationship with audit risk when conducting an audit, uh, meaning in statistical sampling, there is a fixed relationship between the reliability of an assertion based on the sampling or ito yung level ng audit risk, uh, the precision of the statement or ito yung level ng materiality, and the amount of evidence that should be gathered in order to make this assertion. So, para mas maintindihan natin, uh, here is the example with three assumptions in the same circumstance. Suppose you are asked to make an assertion about the average taxable income of randomly selected people. Also, suppose that gathering information regarding the taxable income of these people is costly. Consider the following three situations. Sa first situations, you are asked to make, with a high degree of reliability, the assertion that the average annual taxable income of 10 people will be between minus and plus 300 million. Even though a high degree of reliability is requested, you will probably do little or no investigative work because you were allowed to make a very emphasized statement. Uh, dito kahit mataas yung level ng audit risk, uh, hindi siya magiging matrabaho or hindi mahirap yung procedures since allowed naman to make a very emphasized statement or mataas yung level ng tolerance for materiality. So, second situation, uh, you are asked to make with a low degree of reliability the assertion that the average annual taxable income of this random 10 people will be between 0 and 70,000. Even though this time a high degree of precision is requested, you will probably uh, only do little or no investigative work since you were only asked to make your assertion with a low degree of reliability. Dito, uh, opposite naman siya ng first situation. Mataas yung level of tolerance for materiality pero since mababa yung level of audit risk, uh, hindi rin siya gaano matrabaho or hindi mahirap yung pag-perform ng procedures. Sa third situation, you are asked to make, with a high degree of reliability, the assertion that the average annual taxable income of these 10 people will be between 0 and 70,000. Because of the high degree of reliability and precision requested, you will probably do extensive ex investigative work. Uh, dito naman, parehas mataas yung level ng reliability and uh, yung level ng tolerance for materiality. Um, magiging matrabaho siya para sa mga auditor or need nila ng extra effort para sa pag-perform ng procedure. So, here is the graph that shows the inverse relationship between uh, materiality and audit risk. Um, pag mataas yung level ng uh, materiality, mababa yung level ng audit risk. Kapag naman mataas yung level ng audit risk, mababa yung level ng materiality.
So, here is the question. Hanggang sa ang level lang ba ng imprecision or materiality ang acceptable sa pag-audit ng financial statements? Uh, in order to decide this, uh, the imprecision tolerated should be related to the size of the audited company's business and its profitability. Kasi, uh, for example, merong 5,000 na difference. Maaaring yung value is not material para sa mga uh, malalaking company pero material siya para sa mga maliliit pa lang na company. So, we have here two cases and uh, we will try to determine how much error or misstatements auditor should be uh, willing to tolerate and still render an opinion that the financial statements were not uh, materially misleading. Sa case 1, uh, a few days before the end of 20X1, a $1,000 expenditure for the repair of equipment was incorrectly charged to the equipment account in the balance sheet rather than to the operating expenses in the income statement. As a result, ignoring depreciation, uh, total assets should be stated at 1,589,000 instead of 1,590,000 and income before taxes should be stated at 107,000 instead of 108,000. Sa case 2, uh, a few days before the end of 20, uh, X1, 50,000 expenditure for the repair of equipment was incorrectly charged to the equipment account rather than to operating expenses. As a result, ignoring depreciation, uh, total assets should be stated at 1,490,000 rather than 1,540,000. And income before taxes should be stated at 58,000 rather than 108,000. So, for our analysis, uh, sa case 1, the financial statements is not material since yung 1,000 na difference is hindi ganun kalaki para maapektuhan or maimpluensyahan niya yung uh, decision making ng mga user. However, sa case 2 naman, since yung net income is overstated by 50,000, uh, the financial statement is material since yung 50,000 is Malaki, malaking halaga yun, uh, which could influence the decision of the users. So, where to set materiality? Paano nga ba sineset yung materiality? Uh, the international standards give no guidelines. However, in practice, um, bawat accounting firm, meron silang uh, sariling set of guidelines or yung tinatawag na rules of thumb uh, related to a financial statement based uh, kagaya ng net income or total revenues. Uh, rules of thumb commonly used in practice include 5-10% to 10 of net income before taxes, uh, 5 to 10 percent of current assets, uh, 5 to 10 percent of current liabilities, 0. 0. 0.5 to 2 percent of total asset, 0. 0.5 to 2 percent of total revenues, and 1 to 5 1 to 5 percent of total equity. Uh, para sa pag-compute ng materiality through financial statement base, uh, nakadepende ito sa nature ng business ng isang kliyente. Let's say, for example, yung net income ng client is uh, malapit sa break-even. It is not appropriate to use the net income for the year as the financial statement base kasi uh, mababa siya. Uh, in that case, kailangan pumili ng auditor ng, uh, ng ibang financial base. Thank you.